We talk often about how the KGNZ signal reaches into five units of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Uh, the Robertson unit north of Abilene is one of those, and we hear back often, not just uh, during the day, but specifically for KGNZ at night, of what it means to be able to listen uh, to some of the music we play, address some of the harder issues that we talk about that's in some of the hard rock, hip hop, and rap that you hear right here on KGNZ at night. Um, I actually received a request uh, from a couple of family members of the man you see sitting in front of me right now who wanted to hear, let's see, Young by Andy Minio, uh, some 116, and of course we oblige that. And through communicating through his family, uh, we have figured out that Richard wants to share his testimony because lives can be changed even in the darkest of circumstances. We know multiple times that Paul uh, was in prison and uh, that's, that's something that's powerful to me. So I, I would like to introduce you to Richard. How y'all doing? Um, yeah, my name is Richard, of course. Uh, yeah, man, I appreciate y'all having me here. We're very glad to have you on the show. Uh, and I'd like to talk to you about some of your, your favorite music. I, I know there's some specific things you've requested yes, uh, through yeah. your family, through Sarah and through Nicole. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy because growing up, my cousin Nicole, she, she always tried to get me into that music because she knew I was uh, into rap. So she used to always try to get me into Christian rap. But I used to always stiff arm her and say, I'm, you know, thank you, appreciate it, I'm good though. So now that I came in here, and this little journey I've been on, it's amazing because one day I was flipping through the stations and I don't know, I went way down there to the left and I heard some rap. So I started listening to it and I said, man, this is Christian rap, this is crazy. So I, I stayed on there for two to almost three days to listen what was going on with that station. And it's crazy because I figured it out. I seen the program of KGNZ at night. So I started listening to it, it rock and hip hop. I said, man, I started trying to put people around near me, more on it. Then I started getting more into it, learning about the rappers that were on there. How many guys have you got listening to the show? Uh, man, I don't know for sure because I, I peeped to like going to wreck with some people, they'll tell me. No man, yeah, I, I get on there when you be saying it, cause I'll yell it out the door. I say all the way to the left, all the way to the left, cause that's the station, the all the way to the left. So people know every time a song come on that I like, I'll go to the door and yell it. But there's there's a good amount of people that it's 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 different because a lot of people think as far as being a Christian as a follower, they see the Christian music in the churches. And a lot of them can't really relate to that. So when it comes to rap, they can relate to that. We, we relate very well with that. And when they see positivity coming out of it, it's just, it's, it's a bigger call right there. You know, some of those guys have been through some pretty rough circumstances. A lot of them have walked the same path you have. Worse, yeah, they have. They're very, uh, a lot of us, you know, I, I like this song. It's not rap, but it's, it's by Need to Breathe and Nora Daigle, and when she says, there's a reason why the road is long. It takes some time to make your courage strong. And, and I understand for some of us, we gotta bump our heads a little bit more than others. But there's people in here, man, they got great potential. Just, we gotta remove that veil from our eyes and that dark, you know what I mean? Just, it's amazing though, man, how the Lord works because I'm seeing it, you know what I mean? Just, and it all started with my mom passing away. I lost my mom April 19th, 2016. And that, that was my world right there. And, and after that, though I didn't change my ways, but I dusted that Bible off. And when I used to hear that saying, dusting the Bible off, I got to experience that because I literally had to wipe my Bible off because it had dust on it. And I opened up, started reading it, and I didn't change my ways. I was still doing stuff, you know what I'm saying, that I'm not supposed to be doing. I'm in prison, still doing wrong. But things happened down the path, which led me to where I'm at now, Ad Sig. And it's amazing how much the Lord's called to me. He just, he keeps keeps giving me signs and, and letting me know on my path, you know what I mean? He keeps stumbling and he gives me right. And how much people around me are drawn by that type of energy, positive energy, because it's too much negativity in here. You know what mm. I mean? It, a lot of people just want to talk about drugs and the streets and this and that, but you don't find too many people talking about what you're going to do when you get out as far as positivity and, and it's just I just see the Lord working every day and I just I love it man it just keeps me going if you're gonna change 
other people when you get out because you've been changed here. Yeah. You've got to be ready to walk that path. That song you mentioned is Hard Love, by the way. Exactly, yeah. That's love, to us, I don't think we can totally comprehend the way that God loves us. And I think that's what that song is about, that it's it's hard love. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's some guys in here that are doing some hard time that may feel like, hey, I'm I'm the worst, worst there is. I, I'm beyond help. I'm beyond love. Yeah. How... How does following Christ, how does faith change that here? It, like, man, it, it, it hurts, man. Like, to see people knowing that, like, they got a lot of time and, and, and seeing them down and people in here that don't got family, you know what I'm saying? They just, they don't got family to support them. So if you ain't got family, it just makes it that much harder. And I can see, and, and I thank the Lord for the, the path I went on because I understand and, and I can relate and understand that these people are really going through battles. And I see the hope get real low. They don't have hope, so I try to encourage people and to not be discouraged because this thing, this is just temporary. You know what I mean? There's, a, there's yet, there's more to come. And like I tell people, that in here, out there in the world, is full of darkness as well. But everybody that gets in trouble comes in here. So it's all these people that just been struggling and troublesome in here in this one place. It, it makes that person that even think about changing that much harder. And and I tell people, man, it's don't don't have the mistake I made and it took me to lose my mom to, to snap out of it, you know what I mean? That there is bigger things in life. I lost my mom in two thousand eleven. Sorry. And man. it was it was a hard thing. I started doing some things that I shouldn't do. And uh, when I met my wife, uh, she was an angel for me. Um, I know where you're coming from. Yes. You talked about your journey a little bit, and I know I know part of the reason we're doing this is so that you can share your testimony. You can tell people what Christ is doing in your life, and maybe there's somebody else here that happens to listen to KGNZ. There are a lot, there are a lot that listen to the station. Yeah. Maybe it would encourage somebody else. Maybe they're in prison. Maybe they're not. I want to hear your story. The environment we grew up in, the environment some some have, it's, it's, it blinds us, and we don't realize the path that we're being misleaded in. And and I see kids today, you know what I mean, being think they're cool, hanging around in the, the streets and drugs and guns and all the stuff that comes with it. The fast life, it, it's it's a good deceive that the devil has for them because it's blinding them. You know what I mean? Like down the road, it leads to other stuff, consequences. And, and I, it's a big thing about the streets is my crazy life. And even though people know that there's two things that the street life's guarantee is prison and death, and yet we still go through it. And that's, that's the point of my crazy life. It's like, it's crazy because you know this and yet you still do it. And it's just, there's so much more to life. Like this dude, when I was in county, Though he's in county doing trouble, but he laid down so many pictures on the table of him traveling. And this is a small example. He's traveling and he's looking, he's saying, he's like, look, different states, different countries. And he's like, this is, this is what life's about. This is more to life than the streets that we're trapped in. And seeing that, I just like want people to know, like, man, there really is more to life than the hoods and the streets and the things we do on a day-to-day basis, build a family, y'all go places, and, and Colossians 3, 17, everything you do, work or deed in his name. Man, I'm on a journey right now. I still mess up, we're not perfect, and I just- None of us are. Is this a part of that journey? When when you got busted, was it was it kind of a wake-up call? Was it, was it God saying to you, hey, brother, I've got I've got things much better for you than this. See, man, when I got busted, I, I can't even lie. I didn't even think about nothing just like positive like that. My mind was so negative. I was just so worried about like things around me, like my girl at the time. It distracted me from actually what's going on in life. So now that it took, like I said, it took all the way to my mom passed away for me to actually start seeing. And then my aunt, She's, she's a firm believer, and she tells me that this vision she had one time, that it was a hand, it was God's hand, and on his hand, it was me, and I'm running. 
and and I'm in the letter she said she tells God what is this supposed to mean and he says he's running but he ain't going nowhere <laughs> so when she said that I was like man that was around the same time I decided laid my life down picked up my cross I said man I'm done man I can't keep doing this being here uh, alone a lot of the time does that does that draw you closer to Christ sometimes? Yes, it really does. Cause seeing people like, like on the runs and stuff, and being not just in prison, but where I'm at in Ad Seg, it's it's a closed isolation, solitary. And I see people, and I've ran into people that are real good people, and they lose it back here. Cause it's just inhumane. People lose it, and for me to be going around smiling, laughing joking so normal and they're like man this dude just lost his mom and people know me. people that know me they know how close i was so they're like why hey he's happy they told me one time i was in the day room dustin they said hey man richie and i'm like I'm looking at him what's up i'm at the door looking at the door and like you changed a lot i'm like what you mean like man you're happy <laughs> and that's, that's that's amazing because that's that that keeps me going do you remember when Moses went up on the mountain with God? Yes. And he came back down and it was just glowing, was yes. radiant. That's, you know. yeah, that's... It moves me that, that you guys are carrying that radiance out and people are wondering why, why is he joyful in a, in a, in a place like this? Why is he joyful? What, yeah. what is there? That moves me. It, 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 it really does. That energy does come off you. When he says you will be a lighthouse, we use as lighthouses, shine that light. We, it, it does. When you follow in the Lord and have any of the Lord in you, and you really do shine, and, and, and you don't even notice it. But people just draw to you, and they don't even notice it. They just draw to you. Like, man, this dude got so positive energy, and, and, and he don't look at people different. He's, he got love. And, and I can honestly say that since I picked up my cross and started following God, that my heart has been changed. And, and, and it's not like, oh, I know I'm not supposed to do this. Oh, I'm not make sure. It's literally ain't. It's not in my heart no more. Like the hatred I had towards people or, or towards certain stuff going on, it's so much more to that. Like I literally have love, man. It's like I got love for people that I don't even know. When God gets a hold of you, it can be amazing uh, what yeah. ways that happens. Yeah. I'm reminded of Ephesians 6.20. Paul was in prison. He was being persecuted. And he was saying that he wanted to boldly proclaim the mystery of the gospel. And because of that, he said, I am an ambassador in chains. And he wrote saying, pray for me that I may proclaim that message boldly. And I'm, I'm thinking of you in that context also yeah. and i know there's a lot of guys out here too that are very strong in their faith that are those beacons of faith and it's a dark place out here at times yes and it does, it does. It, it, sometimes it feels like man it just ain't doing it but no matter what the light is going to always go through the darkness it's going to always override it like the crazy said man romans 10 9 <laughs> it's all you got to do and, and stuff like that I, i'll speak on the run you, you hear people around me be like, yeah, 116, 116. <laughs> Cause I'm not a saint. Just like I was in the streets ripping what I was ripping. Just now that, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm ripping Jesus Christ, I'm not a saint. Is that hard at times? Do you get ridiculed out here because of that? Uh, man, I honestly think that the reputation I, I, I made for myself, I was real big on reputation, real big. To, from, from every violence, from violence, of fighting, of even being on the street carrying guns. Pride's people, a dangerous thing. It, God can it, change it. Exactly. And them type of reputations, though, people see that know me. And Richard changed his life. And Richard's following God. People know, people that know me or heard of me, they, they know that I don't just play games like that. Like, I don't say something and try to fake it to make it. And when they see that I've changed my life and they see the change, that way there's a miracle. Oh, they're witness to a miracle. I used to curse all the time. That's all I used to do is curse. That's just what's cool, you know? I mean, one downfall I have though is, is lust, women. You know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I tell them it's a process. 
I've overcome drugs, drinking, all this other stuff. But females, and when we talk about females, and I hear you talk about this, you know, your wife and how she's just an angel to your life. And I know that's coming for me. And, and you got to find one that's grounded in God before you. you got to be willing to be second in her life. Yes. And, and, and that's that I can speak from experience. I love <laughs> Stacy to death, and I know there is somebody out there that's willing to stand beside you someday. For those that are out there, what's the number one thing you want people to know? Straight love. That's, that's pure love right there. I used to think, oh, if he loves us so much, how did he just put us through this? go through this and and i used to think like man he's just gonna pop up oh, here i am oh you ain't going to heaven oh you ain't you know what i'm saying because you didn't do this you didn't do that and i used to think like man that's not love if you was to get hung on a cross to die to be beat up could the words out your mouth come i forgive these people and people be like nah i can't i can't even say i can say that i think that's beyond their ability i, I, I really and, and, really? and for somebody to be on the cross passing away, dying from torture, to say them words, I was like, man, it's, it's more to this. It really is unconditional love. And see, that's grace. You don't get to say, Jesus, I'm bad, and I don't want you to do this for me. It's already happened. Yes. You're powerless to stop that. Grace it's, that covers all. It's amazing, man, because the things I see going on in this world today and the stuff I'm reading in this Bible and it's so crazy because this Bible's been written so many years ago. And it has everything in life for you. The, the guidance for us. And, and you just gotta pick it up and read it. I, I encourage people to have hope that no matter how down things get, no matter how bad look things look, somebody always has it worse. The smallest things we take for granted. And when we learn to really appreciate things, you look at life a whole different way. Like I tell people these little three free, these three trays we get in here of, of meals. There's people that will die for one tray. And we don't realize that. And and when you start realizing things like that, you start being grateful. You know what I'm saying? And and, and my whole life I I took advantage of things. My mom, she was always here for me. Always. Never miss a beat. And I took advantage of that. Man, that, that love. Man, that love is amazing. I can't even it's a it's a tough pill to swallow and i i feel so insignificant that i'm just the guy that comes in at night and tries to tries to send that positive message out it's it's not about me it's not about the station it's about god being at work out here uh in a very dark place uh, by the way how do you guys listen to the radio out here oh yeah we we got radios just little 20 dollar radios on commissary you can get them from the commissary yes it's on commissary at all. but like i said you got some people who don't got support. So the people are trying to find radios. And if you can't get it from commissary, even if you come up on a radio, that radio can get took from you. The laws can take it and, and, and I can just imagine people that don't have nothing hearing other people listen to music. Music is life. They get discouraged. They get down. The devil starts getting in their head. See, you ain't even got nothing. You, you might as well do this. You might as well do that. And it's all negativity. But I just want people to know, man, that there is hope, there's grace. It's, we, we do serve a merciful, forgiving. No matter how many times we turn our back on him, he always got his hands out for us, always got his arms open. You know, Satan is on the prowl out here. He wants oh, you as bad as he wants me. Jesus himself gives us authority to curb stomp the devil. Yeah. Y'all believe that out here? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, that's that's one thing I. T I mean, Who all has picked up on that? <laughs> I'm pretty steady. All, uh, every time they hear it, I hear the little stomp curve, and I start laughing. Y'all scream that here. What? Curb stomp curb the devil. Stomp the devil. I I do, but a lot of people don't. You know what I'm saying? I will say it to myself. Or curb stomp the devil and myself, but I know a lot of people. What one thing we do is is that one sixteen. Yeah. Sixteen. You know what I'm shame. Because I've witnessed it. People people don't notice it, but. They're ashamed. I tell people, man, now that we're trying to, even having the Lord's name in us, or even having a thought of changing, that gives the devil more chance. He sees you going away from him, that's gonna make him proud even more. And and, and I tell people, like, man, if you're living wrong, he, the devil ain't got nothing to worry about. He knows he got you, you're good, you're chilling right there where he's at. 
And when he sees you going away from him, he's like, hold on, hold on. He starts sending troops out there for you. And, goes, and, and his downfall is females. Start putting females in your life. And you wonder why all these females lust. And you start slipping and stumbling. It's, it's a street thing that you read in all these little self-help books that people get. And it says, in order to defeat your enemy, you gotta know your enemy. And that's when I started paying attention to Satan. And I understand who he is. The enemy. The enemy. And we have defeated him. He's been defeated. It's already been defeated. Okay. <laughs> Richard Rodriguez, folks, thank you, Richard, so thank much you. for sharing with us tonight. Uh, definitely light from this dark place. It's a ministry. It's a ministry for you. And uh, if you find yourself in a similar situation as Richard and would like to share how Christ is moving in your life, I want to help make that happen. Uh, drop us a line, uh, uh, snail mail, 542 Butternut, 542 Butternut, Abilene, Texas, 79602. I want to give you a voice to share your testimony, your story of what God's doing in your life. You know, that ministry of carrying light. I know you're going to love this one right now on KGNZ. It's 116, new music. 116. Light work. 10 o'clock, Hardest Block is on the way.